please use your sermon notes because it, besides preaching, it will also be a teaching. And you need to record so that you can study when you leave this place. So I need you to turn to the back of your bulletins, get a pencil or pen, and record what the Holy Spirit lays on our hearts this morning. So in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 22. When the time came for the purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. To present him to the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, the 2nd of February is always known as the Feast of the Presentation. It just happened that it fell on a Sunday. But when it, fell, when it falls on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 2nd of February is always the Feast of the Presentation. And so this morning, we in the life of the church Give God thanks, first and foremost, for the obedience of his parents. Forty days after the birth of Jesus, the law required that he had to be presented to God. You will find that in Leviticus chapter 12 and verse 2. Leviticus 12 and verse 2. During this period, when he was presented to God in the temple, Mary also was purified. Those of you from the older church, meaning the older when we had the, the uh, blue ancient and modern, it was not called the purification. Sorry, it was not called the presentation. It was called the feast of the purification. But lately, we have changed it to be called the Feast of the Presentation. Mary was, was purified because 40 days after the birth of a child, she had to be purified because the birth of the child made her unclean. 40 days for a son, now hear this now, but 80 days if she had a daughter. I see the lady smile. You see how biased in those days the whole thing was? Only 40 days if it was a son, you know. She was unclean for 40 days if it was a son. But if she had had a daughter, she would have been unclean for 80 days. But thanks be to God. All of that is gone, eh? All of that is passed away. All because of one name, Jesus the Christ. What do we learn from this ancient ritual or this ancient feast? There are three things I'm going to leave with you this morning. The first thing that we learn is the virtue of obedience. Somebody say obedience. obedience. The first virtue we learn from this great feast is obedience. First Samuel 15 and 22 says, for to obey is better than sacrifice. For to obey is better than sacrifice. Go with me now. Jesus is the king of the universe. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. But even God became obedient to the law. Anybody with me? Even God became obedient to the law. And that is why we as Christians got to be obedient. You can't say you love God and then you're disobedient to those in authority over you. Anybody with me? Amen. You can't say that you love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, 
and then you repel it against those in authority. Amen? Amen. All because you want to have your own way. Amen. That is why our Bahamas is so messed up today. Amen. Obedience. The teacher says something to your child. They show in a whatever. The teacher scolds them. They come home and tell you, you won't go to the school to fight. That's right. What you teaching the children? That's right. They don't have, they don't have to obey authority. That's right. And I believe this morning, this is what causes our country to be the way it is. Messed up. Because everybody thinks they're King Walker. That's why so much killing going on. Amen? Because why? Nobody wants to bow. Everybody got to be the big man. And the big man end up in the graveyard. That's right. But we come against that this morning in the name of Jesus. Especially in the church. In the church, we have authority. In the church, we have order and decency. Amen? And we must follow suit. We must follow suit. And this is the joy of the first virtue in the feast of the, of the presentation. Jesus is showing us, Mary is showing us that obedience is better than sacrifice. Christ the King, do you realize that because of obedience, we today can celebrate our full and free salvation? Yes. You realize that? Yes. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. Let me show you what obedience has cost all of us this morning. Philippians 2 and verse 8. And being found in human form, fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Somebody give God a praise for obedience as well. Because of Jesus Christ's obedience, we today can celebrate salvation. I got any celebrators inside here this morning? We can celebrate our full and free salvation. You can imagine, can you imagine in the Garden of Gethsemane when the enemy came against Jesus, messing up his mind? You can die for those ungrateful people. You can die for the people who on Palm Sunday shouted Hosanna. And then tomorrow, which is Good Friday, they're going to shout what? Crucify him. And he wrestles. And he wrestles. Because he was human, eh? Yes. He wrestles. And then he comes to his senses and he says, Not my will, thy will be done. Christ the King, sometimes we got to keep our mouth shut. shut. Just so God's name may be glorified. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes we got to just give people a death ear. Yes. Yes. When you know you're walking in the will of God, you will find that some people will come against you when you stand for righteousness. Amen. When you stand for holiness. When you put down a law that persons can edify themselves and become better believers, Amen. you're going to find some people will come against you. But all I say this morning, lift up your head yes. to the hills from whence cometh your help. Because you know what? My help cometh from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Let them talk, but you stand firm. Because once you stand on the rock, and that rock is Jesus, our glory, in the end, you will be vindicated. And so, stand, and you've got to stand alone. You know who you're standing with. And so obedience, obedience to Christ the King, is a part of being a true believer. Psalm 95 and verse 7. Psalm 95 and verse 7 brings it alive for us this morning. For today, 
If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. What's it saying? He's calling. He's given us two choices. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Today I said before you, life and death, blessings and curses, but choose life that you and your descendants may live. And so, when it comes to obedience, Christ the King, even when your heart is hurting, because people too blind to see where the Holy Spirit is leading you, you just got to stand. Take on a new attitude. And that's what I got to learn for 2014. Take on a new attitude. See and just don't see. Anybody with me this morning? Yeah. Hear and just don't hear. And all you do, they think you're full in your spirit. You're praising God. Lord, I thank you that you keep my mouth shut this morning. Because they want the spirits. They want the me. But I ain't going to my child. And I'm going to be. I'm going to be. When you said to me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17, for the old things are passed away. Behold, Christ Jesus has made all things new. Somebody give God a praise for what you are to do. I got a new attitude. A new attitude. Because why? I would stay obedient to my master. The second great teaching from the presentation this morning is found in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Now this is a little revolutionary, eh? I hear what it says. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present, you hear the word? You present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. The same way the parents of Jesus presented him to the temple, this morning Jesus is saying to me and to you, I need you to present your bodies to me. I need you to give me all. I need you to forsake the world. I need you to forsake Satan. I need you to forsake the sin of the flesh and to lay it all on the altar. Yes. Some of you might say, well, I presented myself when my parents presented me for baptism. Yes, very true. I presented myself when I came for confirmation. Very true. But did you give your heart to Jesus? Amen? Amen. And that is why I have a problem at my age to confirm a child at 10 or 11. Because at that age, children don't understand the gravity of this great sacrament of confirmation. At 14, 15, when those hormones start kicking in, amen, amen. they need foundation. Yes. They need foundation. They recognize I am fighting a fleshly war. I am fighting, what St. Paul said, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but what? Principalities and power. Come on, somebody. And high places. Yes. So we got to prepare them when they need that strength. When they're pissed. I'm telling them, go sex it up. Anybody with me? Amen. When their parents come back from, from summer holidays and, and someone can't come to school because they're pregnant and making them believe that this is okay. Because mind you, we got some stuff that's going on in this Bahamas, eh? Yes. I was by the sports center yesterday, the, the stadium, because we had to, to officiate. And I saw with four girls, and if you saw what they were wearing, I want to know where homes they come from. The little, little jeans cut up to here. Okay? How are you sitting? All 
Jesus. Tell them to turn around. And you wonder, and you wonder, and we wonder why the Bahamas is in the state he's in. You won't tell me any young girl to leave your home in that state and you call yourself a believer. Hey? And you can see what they were out there for, which is sad. And so this morning, the second great celebration is for somebody in this church this morning to say, I present my body a living sacrifice. There's a song that the choir sang many years ago since I was here, when all on the altar we lay. We gotta be prepared to lay it all on the altar. My people, the Anglican Church need some saints who can start standing up for righteousness. Eh? Who can start standing up for holiness? Who can recognize 